Hello everyone and thanks for watching today's video. Yesterday I spoke about my own journey through COVID-19 when I developed the infection. Today I'm going to talk about three different types of people. And now uh, this looks like a very complicated graph and what I've tried explaining here is what sort of symptoms people get and I have divided it into three different types of patients. Ones who get mild symptoms, one who get moderate symptoms, and one who gets severe symptoms. Now, just to explain this graph, um, this is day zero, which I have put down as day. So these are days 0, 7, 14, 17, 23. I went up to just after three weeks. Day zero is the day one gets the infection don't get the symptoms at that time, but gets exposed to the virus, which is a SARS-2 virus, which causes this disease. Now, in this graph, I've also drawn dotted line here, a dotted line here, and a dotted line here. Now, in the first dotted line, this represents uh, the stage when the uh, patient has only mild symptoms. On this dotted line uh, is where there is a threshold where the patient is getting, uh, symptoms are getting worse. And this is the dotted line where the symptoms are most severe. So from just above this line, just around this line, to between these two lines, I have called that mild disease and uh, most of these patients will be at home from midway between these two lines and um, from here to here i have called this as moderate disease now most of these patients which i think i fell into the same category uh, probably will stay at home however some of them will require to go into the hospital and there's a very fine line we are talking about here. Halfway between these two lines, right to the bottom end, obviously where life ends and the death takes place, this I put down as severe symptoms. And most of these patients will be in the hospital. Now, the thing to note at the moment is people are dying at home as well, and they are also dying in care homes. And the data we have available on those people who are dying in the community is very limited at the moment. So we can't comment on it at the moment very much. However, when statistics come out, when things have calmed down and scientists have time to put all the statistics together, then we will know exactly uh, the exact progression of the disease. Now, as you can see on this line, uh, the main symptoms are very mild, like cough, um, tiredness and fever, mostly cough and uh, fever. Now, most of us will get these symptoms um, in turn of uh, weather with a flu or mild flu or influenza or a cold. And many of people will not think of this as much. So these are mild symptoms. Infection happens at day zero, which means this is when the individual got infected, got in touch with or came close to a person who was carrying a SARS-2 virus and uh, they even talking to them, um, that virus is transmitted to this person. Now, from day zero to day seven, we know symptoms are not much because the virus is dividing in the body, multiplying in the body. And at that stage, the symptoms are few little. Now, this might be the time when um, the path will change of three patients. One will stay like that. So the first line, as you can see, is a red line. And these patients are lingering around this dotted line. So from day seven to day 23 or 24, the symptoms get slightly worse. They get slightly more cough, a bit more tickly throat, a bit more fever, and but they return back to near normal after about three weeks of getting exposed to the virus. So these patients have got mild disease. 
saying that these patients have got mild disease doesn't mean that is not a problem. The problem with these patients is because they are the ones who do not think that they have COVID-19 infection. And they are the ones who are going out and about, uh, getting in contact with other people. And they are the main source of spread of infection um, currently as we speak. Because uh, as time progresses, more and more of us will get exposed to this virus and then we all become uh, potentially infective. However, at the moment, this group of patients who have very, very mild symptoms or hardly any symptoms, then they are the ones who are mainly responsible for spread of infection in the community. Now, the second group of patients, which uh, I have drawn in blue, you can see they part company from the first group of patients on about day 14 from the infection. So within a week or just around a week, maybe five to seven days from start of inf symptoms today, which is about day seven to day 14, the path changes. And you can see some patients keep getting worse, keep getting worse, which is the blue line. And they reach this line and just a wee bit beyond. And those are the patients who are getting now breathing problems. So tightness of chest, breathlessness, on mild exertion. And now these patients are at a very critical time. Now this critical time means that either they're going to get better, which luckily many of us do. However, some of them will keep continuing. So these are the ones who are getting better and go back to near normal after day 23, 24 like the first line did. However, some of them, which is the green line, will continue to get worse. Now, when they get to this stage, you can see some of these patients who got better after getting breathing problems and the patients who continue to get worse, this is a stage when they need to go into the hospital because they cannot support their breathing at home. They're turning blue, their oxygen is too low. They're getting very, very breathless at this stage. And when they come into the hospital, they're not immediately put on a ventilator. The reason is because most of them don't require ventilation to start off with. So they will go on maybe on the ward, in a, a ward which is catering just for COVID-19 patients. And they will be put on oxygen, maybe antibiotics to support if they're developing pneumonia and also some pressure oxygen supply to them, which can all be done on the ward in, uh, at this time anyway, because the capacity has increased. But as you can see, some of these patients will continue to get worse. What I have not drawn over here, which I will do now, that quite a few of these patients from this point, uh, when they're requiring support, will perhaps get better and will go and make complete recovery. So they will develop, uh, they had required support oxygen on the ward and then they got better and they got better and they went home around here and made complete recovery. Now the second problem is we don't know the statistics again over here that how many of the patients who are coming into the hospital are actually going on the ventilators. Here is when they go on a full breathing support. So their lungs uh, cannot cope with the amount of oxygen going through the nose or the face mask and they have to go on uh, a breathing machine because they're just getting too tired. This is when the respiratory failure has set in. So they have got both ARDS and pneumonia and uh, this is a very, very critical time. We have no data uh, at the moment again that how many patients who go on a ventilator actually survive and how many patients who go on a ventilator will actually uh, eventually die and as you can see some on a ventilator will eventually survive get better maybe spend a few more weeks in the hospital and then eventually around here will get better and go home whereas some of them keep going downwards downhill and they will eventually pass away from uh, respiratory failure, heart failure, basically multi multiple organ failure. Now, thing to note 
is very important in all this journey is the duration as you can see from day 17 when the symptoms are really bad from here to here and day 23 when actually death takes place there is only six days and between symptoms getting worse and going into the hospital is only day and a half to two days so the progression of the disease that, that we are seeing in COVID-19 is far worse than we see in ordinary patients who are developing normal pneumonia or infection after an operation or some other form of sepsis. Um, the progression of this disease is very, very quick. And the patients from being near normal to getting symptoms and from there, it's just if it's going to spiral downhill, it just happens so quickly that the health system in this area has got very little time to cope, especially if you have not few patients coming in, but hundreds of patients coming in who are falling into this category because the number of beds in a hospital are limited. You can't increase the number of beds. The ventilated beds are limited. They have been increased quite a lot over the last few weeks. However, they are again not unlimited. And the second problem that is happening, the disease is moving. So it's moving in UK from the south, which is around London area, up towards the north. And we think the peak has not reached the Midlands. And after a few weeks, a couple of weeks, and we're not talking about months, we're talking about only two weeks, it will go up north towards Scotland, Northern Ireland, etc. So that is the most worrying thing about this disease at the moment. I'm not trying to, you know, scaremonger anyone, but these are the facts we have. The facts, unfortunately, are limited at the moment because um, and there is not enough statistics coming in. This is what my observation is of the disease, what I have seen, what I have read, what I have heard over the last maybe a month or so. And this is my observation that what I think uh, is happening with COVID-19 disease. So may um, uh, all of us stay safe and uh, may God protect us all. Thank you for watching.